we often hear there's a lot of collectors out there that want to be retailers or even more think that they can design exclusive variants. If you could provide one piece of advice to the next generations of retailers, what would it be? Kevin, we'll start with you on this one. <laughs> Only one? Uh, <laughs> you can provide lessons learned. Uh, okay. So I would say the thing, the biggest thing for me when I was starting out was not having enough capital. So we, we, I didn't have enough money to properly run the business. Um, so it was really a struggle. And you don't know, like you, you put something up for sale, it may not sell well at first, but you know, three months, four months later, it might start picking up and you have to have enough money to operate, to pay that bill and to keep the business going. Um, so I would say before you jump into, you know, being a retailer, just even if you're going to sell regular comics or you're going to sell store variants, you want to make sure that you have enough money to float the business for several, for several months while you build up your customer base and, you know, get your processes and everything down. Uh, if, if I had to pick one thing, that would be, that would be a big thing for me to, to let people know. John, I know you're, getting into this, but you've been around, you've, I mean, I'm sure the, the alerts and the, the, the light bulbs are going off as, as you're making your way into this journey. Um, is there anything that's stuck out to you so far as, as you start to progress through this? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot, a lot of different things, Brian. Um, Kevin made a great point about capital, uh, about capital. If you don't have, you know, the ability to cover your expenses, um, you're not going to be in business very long. Um, I'm going to go in a slightly different direction. Um, I'm going to say hustle and my, uh, my wife's going to be thrilled with this, but my inner, I have to let my inner Gary Vaynerchuk loose a little bit right here. Um, you got to grind it out and you got to hustle, right? There's a lot of people that have dreams and aspirations. And like I said before, comics to me is all about joy and excitement and emotion. And, uh, sometimes I think that that carries people, um, into thinking that they can do things that maybe they can't do. Um, you got to be willing to work and grind it out. You got to be willing to, you know, um, like, like I've done in the past, work a nine to five, come home and grind it out till 2 a.m. You know what I mean? On your business. You got to be able to put in the work and, and hustle, you know, and you got to be willing to make sacrifices, uh, whether that's time with your wife or your children, uh, four beautiful children. Sometimes I have to sacrifice time with my kids to work on the business. Uh, sometimes we have to put date night on hold, my wife and I. So, so we can work on the business. Um, and I think that if you're, you know, binge watching Netflix and Disney plus constantly, that those are minutes that are not going towards your business. Right now, not to say that I never do it could these be R and D. <laughs> What's that, Brian? It could be R and D for you. Yeah. I mean, it's, oh, it could be, I mean, that's a good point. Um, I know what you're saying though. And I, I agree with what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, every, I mean, we only have so much time, right? So I think triage is very important. You're almost like an emergency room uh, nurse or a doctor or a police officer when you're running your own business, you have to triage and you have to be able to uh, execute right on what's most important at that, at that moment right there. And I just think that um, a lot of people dramatically underestimate what it takes to run a successful business and they're not willing to put in the work. Having a successful business is like having six pack abs, right? Everybody wants it. You just got to put the work in, in the kitchen and the gym to get that right. Um, it's attainable. It can happen. Uh, and it all comes down to execution and grind and hustle. So I would just say hustle that one word. I said a lot of words to say one word. <laughs> well, you guys are definitely the experts at this topic, but I do want to add a little bit in the limited experience that Brian and I have had um, developing some projects as a part of the aforementioned comicbookinvest.com. Some things that kind of I learned was especially important when you're working it with a group. Kevin, you mentioned shared retailer uh, variants. I know, John, you were working on the same sort of thing. Um, when you're working with a group is to make sure that everybody's really on board with the project. We worked on some projects where there's always going to be compromise, right? You may compromise an art on the artist, you know, you may compromise on even which book, but you just can't compromise on certain strategic things. Like what, what are we looking for when we're making a book? And more importantly, the integrity things that come along with this business, because some of the backlash that I think that the retailer exclusive 
kind of industry is dealing with is really old problems from an old generation that played a lot of games with print run and did a lot of things that now aren't as prevalent per se in the market, but you start to see things that we've talked about on the channel about things like artificial print runs and people who want to do things like destroy 75% of a print run to try to make a book seem at a certain scarcity or rarity. Um, and then, you know, those were things that like, you know, if you and your partners aren't jiving on, uh, it, it, it's going to cause contention. And that was some things like we went through, we experienced, and then working on projects, Kevin mentioned it before. I, 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 when John came to us, when he was starting his and he asked advice, I, this is the biggest thing I said is it is hard enough to sell a cover of a book, a variant cover of a book. If you're trying to sell the book and the variant cover, you're doing too much. So people have to already be interested in that book. It has to already be a book that's desirable. Um, so I loved when Kevin kind of touched on that earlier because that was definitely something that, that we kind of went through where, you're trying to hit people from too many fields and that's just asking marketing to do things that they just can't, can't, can't possibly come up with. 